I'm here with comic book writer and artist Dan Jurgens. You might know him as the creator of Booster Gold. How are you doing today, sir? Very good, thank you. How is the convention treating you so far? So far, so good. The first time in Phoenix, and i got to say, I've been having a pretty good time. Uh, how did you first get interested in making comics? As a reader, uh, as a kid, I you know, started reading comics primarily because of the old Batman TV show, which was on, you know, like in the 60s. And there were kids in the neighborhood who had comic books. I didn't have any, but I'd see them reading them on their front steps and things like that. So I started to check them out, got into it, got immersed in the world, got interested in the art, and began to think, maybe this is something I could do as I got older. And I, you know, I started to pursue it, and here I am. Uh, I've always been a big, big fan of Booster Gold, uh, ever since uh, the first run uh, back in the 80s. Uh, how did that character ever come to be for you? Primarily, uh, you have to realize the world in the mid-80s was very different than it is now. And um, now we're much more, I think, accustomed to the notion of self-aggrandizing celebrities, that kind of thing. Uh, of endorsements and people who pursue just the idea of being talked about, being on TV, being in the press all the time. In that day when it was different, uh, at that time the Olympic Games really were a an amateur kind of undertaking, at least in this country. And they weren't allowed to make money, um, you know, pursuing their athletic skills or anything like that. They had to be classified as amateur status. And in the 84 Olympics, there was some talk about a particular do diver, I believe, a swimmer or diver, who had already signed an endorsement contract without ever having won a medal. And people thought that was shocking. You know, he hasn't even won yet, and he's, you know, going to go out and sign this endorsement deal. And that started me thinking along those lines of, what if there was a superhero who did that? Not a hero for hire, but someone who said... I'm going to go out, I'm going to get my name in the press, I want to be famous, I want to be a star, I want to make money at it, and if I happen to do a few good deeds along the way, so much the better. You've pretty much worked on uh, almost all the major Booster Gold-centric books uh, since its inception. Uh, how has that, uh, over that period of time, how has that uh, look towards that character been for you, uh, seeing it from the 80s till now? Well, you know, it's been great to be able to do it. I guess uh, primarily I think that if a creator is out there who created a character, um, he should always be able to work on that character. That's just my own personal viewpoint for the most part, and there might be some exceptions to that rule. But I think generally the, the creator of a character has the cleanest, purest notion of the parameters that establish that character and are the ones who can guide them and move them forward. Uh, most recently, you got you finished work on Justice League International. Uh, how was it um, with the new DC-52 uh, adapting Booster in its new situation? You know, it was fun. Uh, I don't know that we were really, um, in only 12 issues, got to the point where we could get into Booster's background a lot because it was a team book. But I think... Um, we got to sort of reestablish the character in this new 52, drop a little bit of hints about, you know, where he might have been from and what his background might have been, uh, which I think for, are really quite clear for people who want to look for it. Um, so, yeah, it was fun to be able to do. But with uh, being seeing it and uh, the evolution of the character over time from being pretty much a selfish uh, promotional hog to be uh, a, a regular hero of the multiverse uh, through space and time, uh, go, not going to pretty much square one again uh, with all the, the headway that character has been. Well, I don't know that we're back to square one. If you look at Booster Gold Volume 1, which are the, you know, the first 25 issues of a series back in the 80s, he really made a lot of the leap at that time. He, he became uh, less self-centered, more concerned with doing the right thing, and that kind of stuff. But what still makes him different than Superman is, yeah, if there's an action figure deal in it for him, well, yeah, of course he'll do it. 
you know, yeah, I'll save the plane as it's falling from the skies, but, you know, if I make a little coin off it, so much the better. So that's what Booster is still about, and that's okay. But, yeah, obviously there's a link with the time stream uh, that was also beginning to be established then. And if you go all the way back to um, issue 25, which was his last issue at that time, we made it very clear that in that story that Booster was going to have um, a pathway to a much larger role in the DC universe, that greatness awaited him, and that's kind of what we had in mind all the time. No, because as a fan, I've looked at it that uh, there's changes now to his personality. Uh, his whole relationship with Blue Beetle, well, the original Ted Cord Blue Beetle, uh, seems to never be in this universe. Right, and that's true because you know you don't really see Ted. We have a different Blue Beetle now. That having been said, um, the relationship that Booster and Ted had back in the previous DCU, it was great. I think it's still a part of things and still a part of who he is. So it's still there. Uh, with the change of Booster Gold uh, between the the regular run and the D DC 52, it was pretty much the easiest transition. You saw in the last pages of the last Booster Gold page uh, book that he was his memory was fading already. Right. Uh, what? Would that still have a point to play, do you think, with the character? Well, the last time we saw Booster in the DC Universe, he had been in the Flashpoint Universe. Uh, at that time, you know, he fought Doomsday. He, he pretty much ended up having his costume shredded. He goes up to Vanishing Point, which exists outside of time and space. He's already starting to lose his memory. He looks down at his suit and says, I got to get a new suit. The next time we see him, he's got a new suit. He was outside time and space. Draw your own conclusions. Well, time and space is always a little wibbly wobbly. To, not, to quote. not for me. <laughs> I think I think it's pretty clear, man. Well, um, do you think and uh, would be ever in the cards that DC will have a, a new uh, booster gold issue, just a book for him, just for himself? Oh, I'm sure it'll happen at some point. I don't know when, necessarily, but, you know, characters tend not to fade away forever, and, and I'm sure Booster is too good a character to have that happen to him. So, yeah, I'm very confident he'll have a series again. Uh, the only appearance of Booster Gold in a real-life adaptation was his, appear his small appearance in Smallville. Uh, did you have any opinion on how they played the character there? I thought they did great with it. Uh, Jeff Johns wrote the script. I thought he was very, very true to Booster throughout. I thought it was a great deal of fun. Um, the actor who portrayed him, I think, did a real nice job of capturing the feel, and I loved the smile with the sparkly teeth effect and everything like that. So I thought, yeah, it was a great deal of fun. And at the same time, the character has been optioned by the Sci-Fi Network for his own series. And that's under, you know, some level of production right now in terms of, you know, they're taking a look at whether or not they want to move forward with it. Um, it's being put together by Andrew Kreisberg and Mark Guggenheim, who are doing the Arrow show on the CW. So, you know, we'll see what happens. I did not know that. I'm truly looking forward to that. Do you think you have a, a part? If, if it does get picked up, do you think you'll have an active part in some of the... Uh, say of the show? I have no idea. I mean, I've talked to the guys. They've been very nice about asking my opinion on a couple of things. And uh, I've seen some of what they have put together so far and what they've written, and it's really, really nice and very true to the character. So we'll see. Well, thank you very much for talking with us. And sure. I will continue to, to look for your work and in the future books because everything I've read of you, I've just completely enjoyed. Thank you. I appreciate that. I hope you enjoy the rest of the con. Yeah, me too. So far, so good. It's been a lot of fun.